Soccer on BTN is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Michigan and Maryland, the last game on the regular season schedule. There's one other game, though, and it's overlapping hours in East Lansing, Indiana. Number one right now in the conference. They get awarded a penalty kick. Trevor Swartz converts his third of four on the season to get his third goal on the year and puts Indiana up 1-0 on the road in East Lansing. Again, that game at the half, and we are an hour behind in College Park, Paul. We've got uh, two teams who still have a chance to grab a share of the Big Ten title or to walk away with it outright. This is what the bracket looks like as it stands. Yeah, that goal is bad news for Michigan. It wipes out their chance at a share of the Big Ten title. It also puts a little bit pressure on Maryland. They know now if the score stays as it is in that Indiana-Michigan State game, the Terrapins are going to need a win for a share of the Big Ten title. Shaka Daly says that he's got the healthiest group he's had all year. Here's how he'll start today at Ludwig Field against the Maryland Terrapins. Very excited about the group he's got to field this afternoon. Well, it hasn't been often this season that he's been able to put his best attacking players on the field together, and it's that forward line that's going to be so dangerous against Maryland today. Francis Atua Henny had a down year. He's not been able to stay healthy. He is back on the field on the left wing. Mohamed Zaki up top, the freshman, had a nice year, but Jack Callahan left-footed cutting in from the right side. Not often. In fact, only once in 14 years if we said Maryland has lost three in a row. This is the starting 11 this afternoon for the Terrapins. Again, they're so talented talented attacking up front. It's been weird because the goals have dried up three straight games without a goal, but keep a, an eye on the back line. Some injuries there. Two starters are out due to injury, so some changes on the back line with Matt DeRosa and Miles Stray stepping in. We are so excited that you're with us this afternoon. There's a lot of drama that will play out in particular in the first half as these teams and coaches have said, we just have to come in and play our game as hard as we can knowing that there could be a title on the line for us. It's always interesting when you have a title on the line, right? Because teams tend to play a little bit uptight. But you've got two very good attacking teams, both of whom know that they're they're going to need a result in order to have a chance at a title. Um, and so I think this game could be pretty wide open at certain points. And then you have to factor in the weather. It's rainy. It's cold. That leads to some mistakes. Could we see goals as a result of that? That's the X factor for me in this game. Big ball over the top. Sebastian Elney on the run. Earns a little bit of contact there. That's Shaka Daly, the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines in his sixth season. And I have to tell you, of all the conference calls that I've been a part of with Coach Daly, I think our call this week with him may have been one of the most upbeat. He feels real good about this group. He's finally got that health factor working in his favor. Absolutely, and I think, you know, he's done a really nice job building this program, and I think he's finally feeling the pieces coming together. And a big part of that, of course, as the course of the season went along, is injuries. And now he's got guys back on the field. He can see what this team is really capable of, and this is when you want your team getting healthy, right? Well, they've got to deal with Eric Williamson, who slips this ball through on the inside to Rosansky. Williamson, who lit up Wisconsin with a hat trick in 16 minutes, has been frustrated as well as the rest of the Terrapins the last few games. More on that as we continue this afternoon. Good to see this guy back in for Maryland, George Campbell as a right back, a converted midfielder and he has provided great depth not only for Maryland as a strong defender but also getting forward too. And Gordon Wild, who will watch this ball fall out of bounds, he won, he had 17 goals last year, was a Mac Herman Trophy finalist and the goal scoring has dried up a bit for a while. He's sitting on five right now. Yeah, you know, th that's one of those things that you never really count on as a coach, right? I mean, you've got one of the top goal scorers in the country coming back for your team. You start to kind of check that off the box. You know the goals are going to come from Wild, and, and instead he's really struggled to find the back of the net. And I think when you have a year of preparing for a guy like Gordon Wild, it really helps teams defensively. Here's Hallahan. The Irishman gets to the top of the box, and he'll lay it off. Francis Atuahene, as Paul said, big time, big time expectations from Atuahene, and he lived up to the billing when he was a freshman. That was all anyone talked about around the conference. Sasho Sarovsky, 25th season. As we mentioned earlier, does not see skids like this very often in his success with the Maryland Terrapin soccer team and all that he has done, not just for college soccer, but also for 
soccer at the pro level in terms of the players he provides to the next level, but also the development of young players too. Sasha's in the middle of a three-game losing streak. That hasn't happened in 13 years. And as I mentioned before, it's also the first time under Sasha Sarovsky that his team has failed to score in three straight games. And talking to him on the phone, you know, what struck me is that experience that Sasha has, there was no panic in his voice at all. He said, you know, he was looking at some of the positive aspects of this. He's had a team that's gone undefeated for a long time, and the expectation that comes with that, can you complete an entire season all the way through a title with the undefeated record? And he says, you know, I, I kind of wanted my team to have a loss going into the postseason. He didn't want two, and he definitely didn't want three, he said. The key is going to be, can they snap out of the losing streak before the postseason? Now they've come back down, they recognize that they are a beatable team, and does that help reinvigorate them and help them play to that next level going into the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament beyond that? Here's Elney now with plenty of pressure. We'll look to relieve that pressure and a pass back to Bergman. Johannes Bergman. Lovely ball brought down by Campbell. You see where his value comes in as a converted midfielder. He's got all the technical skills, doesn't he? Well, this is what we see in, in today's modern game. The fullback is no longer just the defender. He's such an important part of what teams do going forward. And I think Sasha Sarovsky recognizes that and sees the quality of an attacking player converted to the right back. Well, you, yes, you're a right back. You're going to be stuck in some situations where you defend one-on-one. -on -one, but can you become another body going forward? Can you create overloads on the wing and give us service? And, and certainly George Campbell is capable of that. The 23-year-old German, Johannes Bergman, with the service. Rosansky's there. It slips out and away. It'll be scooped up, collected by DeRosa. Matt DeRosa back into the mixer. Campbell, long ball in, is headed out and away. Jackson Reagan and Abdu Samaki. Along with Mark Ibarra making up the core, the central part of the Michigan defense. Now going the other way, big ball in to the far side. Hallahan will have to gather that and then look for help. Hallahan 1v1 versus DeRosa, far side. The head ball down and in is cleared away at the last moment by Bergman. Well, Hallahan is a left-footed player playing on the right wing. He likes to come inside of that left foot here. He gets it on his right foot. Great service into the box. And this is what you want to see if you're Shaka Daly early on. Can we absorb some pressure from Maryland, come back the other way on the counter, and get the ball into the box, create some dangerous opportunities on a wet field? Fantastic stuff early on from Jack Hallahan on the right side. Corner kick, Michigan. Inside, it's a goal for Michigan! The Wolverines put their foot to the floor first. Well, what a big goal for Daniel Makuna. They weren't sure if he was going to be able to play in this game. He's had a shoulder injury. He comes in and on the set piece, six yards out, he gets big and puts the header to the far post. A dream start for Michigan on the road at Maryland. And if you're the Terrapins, I think this is obviously a nightmare scenario, not just for the result today, but They've lost three straight at home. They needed some confidence. And to give up an early goal, does this impact them mentally? But a huge goal from the center back, Daniel Makuna. Makuna at six foot, 200 pounds, charges through the six yard box like a truck. He's got English football culture in his blood. And he is Strong on restarts, as we heard from Shaka Daly this week, but have now seen firsthand. And this is one of the problems that Maryland has run into, in particular last week versus VCU, when VCU was able to come in here midweek and really put pressure on Maryland from the start instead of sitting back. You know, you mentioned that phone call with Shaka Daly, and, and what struck me, not just the confidence, but 
his idea of the approach to this game, playing on the road at Maryland, knowing the energy that the Terrapins can get from a crowd if they play well early on in the game. He said, we have to take that energy away. In the first 20 minutes, they can beat you. Can we absorb the pressure? Can we take the crowd out of it? The best way to do that is an early goal. And, you know, I, I think this is a dream scenario now. Now, Maryland has to manage the emotion at this point. They've got the goal early on. They've got to get back to the smart defending. But, you know, as a coach, when you lay things out for your players and you tell them, hey, we need to win this first 20 minutes, either get a, get a goal early on or absorb that pressure and then find our way into the game, for it to start playing out the way you tell your players it should play out, I think that's a huge, huge moment for Shaka Daly and for his team. DeRosa with the long throw, and they're going to earn the goal kick. Michigan will. And we'll get a first look at Henry Mashburn. The goalkeeper for Michigan has three starts. He's a freshman and has a lot of trust from that man, head coach Shaka Daly, who said that Mashburn, due to form, earned the starting position, and he has shown big with a record of 3-0, a couple of shutouts. He's part of the Honduran U-20s. It's all a part of our State Farm state of success. Was a starter in the 2017 World Cup with the Honduran national team, the U-17s, of course. And while he hasn't been tested in the last three games to a great extent, Shaka is confident that he's up to the task this afternoon. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I always like when a coach makes a change and you see that there's a level of confidence there, you don't want him you don't want to make another change. There's been no reason for him to change things back up in goal. He had confidence in the young freshman to come in, make an impact. They've won three straight games, they've had two shutouts. Um, and, and Shaka says, I, I see no reason for a change. I'm going to stick with him. Uh, and I, I think that sends a message to the goalkeeper as well. Opportunity inside. Samuel's looking for the quick flick and can't find his target. Now we're going the other way. This is Zaki. Beg your pardon, Atua Henny. With Zaki ahead as a target, Atua Henny goes to the far corner as he likes to do, then cut back or swing it in. Why not? Picked up by Dean Sinclair. Sophomore goalkeeper, young one for Maryland, but he has been terrific for the Terrapins for much of the season. Well, I think even though no goal happened there on that counter, you can see the danger there. Zaki took over, took off right away on a vertical run, pulled two defenders with him. That allowed Atuahene to be isolated for just a moment. Some help from Maryland over to Atuahene to try to stop him, but the dynamic play of this front line really prevents teams from being able to shut down one guy or the other. You have to pay attention to everyone on the Michigan front line, and they can cause some problems in the counter. Maryland's going to have to pick its times when it sends its, full, its fullbacks going forward because they can't afford to give up numbers on the counter too often. Billy Stevens, long throw. Mohamed Zaki with a little bit of a battle there. Got DeRosa and Bergman to deal with. Well, you can see the size on the freshman. Six foot one, 170, still growing into his body. You hope, if you're Shaka Daly, that he just keeps getting stronger and stronger with his target play as a true number nine. You've got two wingers that can play off of him there, as well as some midfielders underneath him, by the way, who are pretty good in their own right. Stevens, long throw to the near six, and the whistle will blow. A little too much contact. Daniel Makuna getting strung up with Miles Stray. Good job here from the center back. Comes into the lineup. Doesn't let Makuna bo bully him off the ball. As you were saying, I mean, Makuna is a big boy. Got the header early on in the box. He's tough to deal with, and he's not afraid of contact on those set pieces. He'll be a target all day. Here's Gordon Wild. Broken up by Marcella Borges. Scooped up and out of danger. Henry Mashburn, the goalkeeper. Gordon Wild sitting on five goals. 17 last year. Terrific for Maryland. Some say, you know, folks have started to figure him out. He's still really dangerous, though. Look, you can think you figured a forward out, but a goal scorer is a goal scorer. All he needs is one opportunity in this game, and he certainly has shown that he's capable of finishing across his entire college career. It's been a slower season, yes, but as you said, you know, he is a dangerous player. He's going to be lingering out on that right wing. He can cut inside. He's going to, to make those slashing runs into the box, and uh, you can't afford to not pay attention to him. I mean, look at his goals per game. Uh, leading the NCAA in points per game. I mean, this is still a very dangerous striker, and I think, too, uh, you know, you start to sense as you get closer to the postseason how important each goal is, and a, a, fo a forward like Gordon Wild, he's going to understand that. First goal for Michigan came off a set piece, a corner kick. Here's Hallahan, who some might argue should have been allowed for advantage there in that whistle that was 
low in the foul. Here's the big service. Headed down by Stray, and then he gets the garbage. He'll clear it out. Set pieces always play a role in games like this where it's a little bit slippery out there. You, if you can get the ball into the box, you can cause some problems. We already saw one player slip Gordon Wild on a counterattack. Sometimes you just want to put it in the mixer. Evo Serta getting tangled up. Maryland is awarded the throw. Well, look right here. I think even just a small indication on this throw in that Michigan is feeling confident. They're staying high and ready to press high against Maryland on the road. I think that's a sign that Chaka Daly is feeling pretty good about the way his team has started. He's not asking them to drop off and absorb pressure. He's sensing a little bit of blood and seeing if maybe he can capitalize on the strong start for his team. Michigan has never won a Big Ten championship. They've, uh, they're have they a young program. They've only been in the conference for a handful of years with a full varsity program. So they've had some great years. They were the tournament champion, uh, but they are still seeking their regular season championship, getting the rings and the banners, if you will. If the draw comes out in that Michigan State-Indiana game and Michigan beats Maryland, Michigan will be the sole owner of the Big Ten Championship. As Maryland is pressed into a defensive situation, here's what's at stake. Well, as we said going into today, four teams had a chance at the Big Ten Championship. With Indiana having a lead right now, they are sitting pretty, being able to finish things up undefeated in this season. Maryland can tie them atop the league, but they're going to need two goals and a comeback here. They need a win in order to do so. As you said, Michigan right now, if all they need is one goal for Michigan State in East Lansing, and they have a potential a chance to win the Big Ten title, I, it would be a huge moment for Shaka Daly in building this program. And, you know, he was talking about the fact that while Michigan doesn't have that experience. They don't have a lot of postseason experience. The guys on this team have never experienced it at all. He's been there before six times. He's trying to transmit that confidence to his team. A little extra physical play from Jake Rosansky against Abdu Samake. Abdu Samaki. First touch out and away. Oof. It's a rough tackle. Maybe sending a bit of a message there early on, huh? St. Clair will come out in communication with Bergman, and that'll be a Michigan throw. And for those of you who have done the math, it is indeed possible that three teams could win the Big Ten championship, and we have it on good authority that the factory will be working overtime to create trophies for all three teams. Uh, there is no tiebreaker when it comes to the Big Ten championship. There is only a tiebreaker when it comes time to seed those teams for the four hosting locations in the Big Ten tournament, which is next weekend. That's right. Goal differential will determine the seeding. Uh, as it stands right now, Indiana came into today a goal with a goal advantage over Maryland. Right now, that advantage has grown, obviously, with Michigan scoring and Indiana scoring. Jack Hallahan has six assists. Third restart, creating a dangerous defensive issue for Maryland. Callahan, service inward. And the slipped ball is down on the turf. You don't want that. The shot is blocked. Bergman looking to clear it. Defensively, you don't want to see that ball drop, do you, Paul? This is a great ball by Hallahan. So dangerous to deal with as a defender. You're facing your own goal. A little touch from anyone puts this on frame. Really nice job by St. Clair just to not allow it to bounce in front of him, but puts it right back into the box. And it was just a mess there for a while. Maryland very fortunate with getting away with that there. The, the fact that the ball was able to bounce in the box usually causes trouble. That's three set pieces now we've seen from Michigan. One resulting in a goal, two resulting in some pretty good chances. You know, for me, Maryland has to be much more careful in where they're giving up fouls early on in this game. Headed the other way, and a whistle blown. Is that Johannes Bergman in the open field dribbling toward goal? It was indeed, and 20 yards out, he draws enough contact, and the foul is called. No, well, we don't often see center backs do this. The German 
It's George Campbell. Oh, it is George My Campbell. Bad. And this is what we talk about, the attacking fullback coming over on the right side, a willingness to come inside with the ball. And I don't know if there was much contact there on that foul, but he did a really nice job of putting his body in the right position where he would have forced a foul and it was enough to get the whistle from the referee. And now we just talked about set pieces for Michigan. Here's a big chance for Maryland. Sasha Sarovsky says he's got to have George Campbell on the field. They spent last spring training him as a right back and he embraced the challenge. He creates a really nice situation here as Lamar Sadich stands over the ball with Gordon Wild. And the rip is off the wall and that'll be a corner kick for Maryland. We'll see if Maryland's able to take advantage here just to start to gain a little bit of confidence. You get one little attack, good opportunity on a free kick, it goes off the wall, but maybe it starts to build a little bit of confidence just to be in the final third for an extended period of time. Sadich with the service for Maryland. Up and out. That's nice work by the freshman Henry Mashburn. Campbell serves it back in. Everyone's pulled out. Credit Michigan's defense for stepping up off the line and getting Maryland out and away. Mashburn, big. I would have preferred a little bit more of a driven ball here. It was floating enough to allow Mashburn to come out and get big, punch the ball away. Well, next week, the 2017 Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament is on BTN with a quarterfinal matchup. Big Ten Soccer next Sunday, 4 Eastern, right here on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go and Fox Sports Go. The bracket as it stands right now, Indiana leading 1-0 versus Michigan State. And if the standees were to sit where they are? Yeah, I mean, it would be huge. I think, in fact, with the way the result is right now, that maybe Michigan would flip up and over Maryland and Michigan State and into that two seed uh, with the goal that happened here in College Park. So, I mean, that just gives you an indication. Every single goal, every single moment in both of these games is going to have an impact on the tournament and where things stand in the championship race here today as well. And if you're flipping back and forth, we understand why Daniel Makuna is the goal scorer for Michigan early on to get the Wolverines on a corner kick. Up 1-0 at Ludwig Field here in College Park, Maryland, and virtually silencing the crowd. I can't help but think that perhaps the conditions out there have silenced the crowd too. But the crew is the supporters group for the Maryland Terrapin soccer team, and they have gathered behind the Michigan bench to give Henry Mashburn a little bit of education on perhaps parts of his, uh, parts of his history that he's not aware of, the way they do their research. But they're a great supporters group in college soccer, and a foul is called. Got to be careful back there. Is I think that's Makuna who steps in on Sebastian Elney. Well, I'll tell you, Maryland is one of the toughest places to play in the country for a reason, and they just have a fantastic atmosphere. It's cold, it's rainy there, but the diehards from the crew are going to be there. Uh, they don't care if they get wet, and uh, they're going to make it tough on the opponents. It's always the core goalkeepers that have to deal with it most. Well, how about our BTN crew out there doing a terrific job bringing us the pictures on a rainy afternoon as Johannes Bergman gets set to throw a ball in via the foot and hope for something positive for Maryland. Here's the service, near post, headed out and away by Makuda and collected one time the shot from up top. Amar Sadich, hopeful, he's got three, looking for his fourth on the season. That was a good ball in on the free kick, but... You can see the benefit of Michigan's size. Makuna getting up, clearing that good, strong header away and out of the box. And look how quickly Michigan's pushing forward, clearing that box out. Six fouls by Michigan early on. They're setting the tone physically as well, but they need to be careful with where those fouls are. That's now two free kicks in a row from just outside the box. Gorgeous, looking long. Long and hopeful there, Dane St. Clair is going to put this ball back into play. And the short goal kick, keeping possession, building out of the back. He's got comfort back there. He's played the last few games with Bergman and Stray as his center backs. And this young man here, how about Matt DeRosa? Getting an opportunity as well. The young freshman, I mean, this is a big moment to have to step into the lineup. You're, you're talking about games that really matter. Here today, a chance at a Big Ten title. 
next week the Big Ten tournament, and depth is so important college programs and the trust of putting a freshman in at left back to test them against a team like Michigan with Hallahan who's matched up against on the wing. We're going to learn a lot about the young kid. I think Sasha you know, clearly wants to see what he's capable of in these big moments. Oh, there are a couple of changes defensively that Sasha Sarovsky has had to make in the back and that's because of injuries. Chase Gasper, a traditional starting back as well as uh, one of my favorites, Donovan Pines, a sophomore center back, big six foot four target, terrific on set pieces, not available for selection due to injury today. And here's Michigan applying some pressure. This is a two ahead. He locks and loads. The deflection is going to earn a corner kick for Michigan. Well, as you know, anytime you're changing things up on a back line, it becomes more difficult on those defenders. And it, communication is so important, especially on set pieces between two center backs. We've already seen a goal come here. And you can see a nice job by the back line recovering, getting a deflection here on the shot. But you know, absolutely, that has to be a factor when we talk about today's game, the fact that two starters are out on the back line for, for Maryland. Mark Ibarra is going to put this back into play for Michigan. Driven ball in. The slip head goes to middle and cleared out. Borges plays it back out to Ibarra. Big service to the mixer. Dean St. Clair comes out, headed out by St. Clair. Little confusion to Tua Henny applies himself and is able to win it back. Sadich 1v1 to the corner in the goal line. Breaks up the cross ball. And Maryland's in the counter. No. Borges breaks it up. This is Billy Stevens. Help with Hallahan. Hallahan 1v1. Far ball. And St. Clair is up to the task at the far post. On a sustained pressure there from Michigan, getting the ball into the box. And I actually like what Hallahan did here. He got his head up, he looked up. Only one or two guys in the area. Didn't just serve a ball in. Took his defender on 101. Forced to save the first save of the day for Dane St. Clair. Rosansky for Maryland. Working with Campbell. Here's Rosansky on the dribble. Broken up by Borges. A terrific slip head, Mohamed Saki. Six foot one, the Ghanaian. High school All-American in Connecticut. Comes back to help. Well, he's part of a right to dream pipeline that's forming and coming a lot of, bringing a lot of players to Michigan, including Francis Atuaheni and Zaki, as well as Umar Osman. He's capable of coming in off the bench and adding even more to this attacking group for Michigan. And Chris, you know, 25 minutes in here, I think, I think Michigan has done a really nice job. Maryland, as much as they love pace, they've got to try to slow this game down and try to find their foothold in this game. Atua Henny just so quick and gets whistled for the foul. There we see again the impact of George Campbell coming up the right side. Not just that, but he knows to dribble into the path of Atua Henny and draw the contact, doesn't he? He did it earlier and created a real dangerous set piece for Maryland. You understand with a play like that how he takes that touch into the path of Atua Henny. He earns the whistle knowing that maybe he can't outrun. Francis, but he can outsmart him, and that's one of the reasons why Sasha Sarovsky's got to have Campbell on the field. Big ball in, big ball in, and oh, the deflection is going to be cleared up off the line by Makuna. How about Mashburn? And this is Rosansky, Sadich, Gordon Wild. And out to Zaki, and the quick one two with Francis Atua Henning, and here's the counterattack. 5v6, but Tuahani needs some help. And he gets it from Marcelo Borges. Great idea looking for Billy Stevens on the overlap. To the far post is long. Boy, Michigan got away with one there. Let's take a look back when we get a chance, but. The young goalkeeper, Henry Mashburn, decision-making in a big game like this is going to be a big part of it for 
the young goalkeeper in one of his first big, big starts. Well, big may be an understatement if Michigan is able to hold serve with a victory here this afternoon and they get some help from that Indiana-Michigan State game in the form of a draw. Michigan will celebrate its first Big Ten championship. And they'll do it on foreign soil. Mashburn with a save just earlier, but he had the deflection he had to deal with. Thank goodness Makuna was tracking back. Well, you can see here he comes out hoping to punch the ball and maybe judges the flight a little bit wrong and punches it into the back of Elney and saved by his center back Makuna on the clearance. Now that's a ball that the goalkeeper probably could catch. And I understand his thinking behind it, wanting to make sure that it doesn't end up in the back of the goal, but nearly, nearly causes big problems for Michigan. Mohamed Saki stretching the field. Dane St. Clair is there to help with the reload from Maryland, and here's Stray into Samuels. Williamson, cross ball in, is headed out by Makuna. Mertz is there. Sadich lays it off, and it's just going to be Campbell to Wild. Coach Sarovsky saying it's much better when Gordon Wild only has one or two touches and he's within 19 yards of the goal frame, because that's really where he does most of his surgical precision work in terms of scoring goals. Well, I was going to say, if you're Michigan, you're quite happy with Gordon Wild being on the ball way out by the touchline there. Callahan's going to help on defense. Billy Stevens happy to yield, and this is a clearance by Michigan. Samuels penetrating pass up the middle. This is Wild now. He's going to go to goal. He's got Williamson in the deflected balls, a corner kick. And that Indiana-Michigan State game is a game that we're watching and keeping an eye on because it is opening up. Trevor Schwartz with the goal, and then in the second half, another penalty kick awarded. And look at that. Michigan State draws even with the Hoosiers. Wow. That's all you can say after a goal like that. A result there gives Shaka Daly's Michigan Wolverines the Big Ten Championship, their first in program history if the score holds. Here's the corner kick. Bergman, big ball, far post. Miles Stray gets to it. It's cleared out by Stevens. Hallahan is going to launch the counterattack. Hallahan working his way outside to Mohamed Saki. Boy, does he open the field up quickly. Maryland's got to get back on D. Saki's there, plays to Stevens. Stevens and a whistle. And the foul called against the Wolverines. Well, going back to that Michigan State goal, obviously there's a long way to go in this game here. Michigan has the lead right now, but a Maryland goal completely shakes things up with the draw. If the draw holds there in East Lansing, it would become a three-way tie. If Michigan holds on for the win, they would have the Big Ten title outright, and we could still see another goal in that Indiana-Michigan State game. A lot still up for grabs here with about 25 minutes left. And East Lansing and a long way to go here. Gordon Wild getting lots of touches. Out to Williamson, broken up by Stevens. Chris, Billy as Stevens. you mentioned, Gordon Wild, you like him to be closer to the goal, in and around the goal. He was pinned out on that wing earlier. You can see him coming inside and looking for the ball more. He received that one ball near the top of the box before slipping it in for Elney to have a chance at goal. And again, he's coming inside to find the ball. So maybe he's starting to get a little bit more of a sense of the game. Corner kick, Maryland. Stray gets a head on it and gets knocked in the process. Mohamed Zaki objecting. Here's why. Not sure what he was angry about. Maybe got pulled down at the end there. The young freshman. You can see how quickly his teammates were to get over to the freshman and tell him to calm down. 
Center back going up, takes a big shoulder, and yeah, he pulls down the freshman afterwards, but I think it's just trying to keep his own balance as he goes down there. That's the story he would tell. That's the story he would tell. That's right. <laughs> well, as a defender who uh, had trouble keeping balance when he went up for headers in the box, maybe I sympathize. Adding a new dimension to the Michigan attack, Mohamed Zaki, a freshman, six goals, four assists. That's a nice new dimension, right? Absolutely, and goals in three straight games from the freshman. I think if you're playing a, a line of three up front, you want a target striker that is able to hold the ball up, score some goals on set pieces, use his size, and also turn and run at defenders and allow the wingers to play off of you. I think Zaki does all those things really well as a freshman. I've been impressed every time I've seen him play this season. Rosansky, big ball in, cleared out by Stevens. It's going to be collected by Michigan. We've got DJ Reeves in. Not uncommon to see Sasha Sarovsky go to his bench, 15 minutes left in a half, and especially in the first half, and bring out a speedy player like DJ Reeves. Umar Farouk Osman is in now up top for the Wolverines as well. And you can see what Osman brings with that pace. And he's a player he can play out on the wing. His most natural spot is probably underneath as a number 10, but you know, only when you see Michigan really either chasing in the game or going after it will you have Hallahan, Zaki, Atuaheni, and Osman on the field at one time. He's just a really nice option right now to come in and change things up a little bit. Bergman, long ball outside. Williamson, 1v1 versus Stevens. This is a nice matchup. Gets to the goal line and earns the corner kick. You know, we haven't said Eric Williamson's name much today, and that's not a good thing if you're Maryland. This is one of the better players in the country, and you need him on the ball. You need him influencing the game as much as possible. And talking to Sasha Sarovsky earlier this week, he said, look, as this season progresses, as we go into the postseason, we're going to need Eric Williamson to step up and lead this team. Whether that means him coming inside more and finding the ball, whatever it is, he's going to have to do it. Maryland's fifth corner of the half. Back in the mixer and cleared out by Stevens, who seems to do anything possible to make contact with the ball, especially on clearance. And now it's a track meet. Here's Francis into a heading. He's got Osman making the run, who's now offside and takes himself out of the play. A two heading goes solo. Well, we talked about that right to dream connection. Here it is in the counterattack. All three players running, and it starts with a two heading. You can see why he's a Big Ten, all Big Ten player last year. Look at the pace on the ball. He's got the overlaps on both sides. And nope, he decides to take it on his own and gets a pretty good look at goal, but not able to put it on frame. Maybe would have liked to see him lay that off to Zaki on his left, but you can't blame him. He has a goal in his last game. He's starting to feel confident. You can see that there. Robbie Mertz. Big turn by a two Henny, and Michigan's able to scoop up the scraps. Zaki runs into Stray, and this will be a Maryland throw-in. So as it stands now, it's a draw in East Lansing. Still time to play. 17 in regulation in East Lansing as Eric Williamson's on the run and slots the ball through to Gordon Wilde. He's got a cross ball in his mind, and it's broken up, but it's free as well. The shot is by DJ Reeves, and it's a goal for Maryland. Well, Chris, as you were saying, things can change any minute. Look at Maryland. Williamson on the ball, starts things off. Gordon Wild gets it into the box. Tempted clearance there, but the ball falls nicely for Reeves, and he makes no mistake from that distance. We were just talking. You want the bigger players starting things for your team if you're Sasha Sarovsky. Williamson to Wild. That's a connection you want to hear as much as possible. And DJ Reeves coming off the bench to get a huge goal for the Terrapins. His second of the season, DJ Reeves paying off his coach who inserted him with about 16 or 17 minutes to go. Sasha Sarovsky watching this play out the way he wanted it to. That's where the goals are going to happen. Chris. You've got to get the ball into the box and see what happens, especially, again, to emphasize, in this kind of weather, a good slide tackle prevents the early first chance, but the ball just slips out and is teed up there for Reeves to finish. 
DeRosa under pressure. Bergman gets it out of trouble. Oh, pretty ball from Wild. Now left in and out by Sadich. Intercepted by Borges, and Borges is on the run. Counterattack. Maryland's going to have to get their feet. A two ahead of service is touched by DeRosa. It'll be a corner kick for Michigan. You know, that's why Michigan's so tough to play against this year. Maryland gets a goal. They're feeling confident. Gordon Wild's playing centrally. He's finding the ball, and all it takes is one second, one turnover, and Michigan's coming the other way down the field on the counterattack and gets a, a decent cross and then a look at goal. Farouk Osman with a couple of assists. The service in for Michigan is cleared out and collected by Atua Henning. Good extra effort by Michigan, and it's left by St. Clair, or for St. Clair, I should say. So that goal for Maryland is their first since October 13th when they lit up Wisconsin 5-4 in the shootout on a Friday night in Madison. Well, what you have to watch now is how much does that give confidence back to this Maryland team? It's one of the best teams in the country, but a program that's not used to going through a losing streak the way they have in the last couple weeks, three straight losses, three games without a goal. Does that one goal start to give it back to them a little bit, a little bit more of that confidence, especially for guys like Williamson and Wild who were involved in that goal? And you can see Sasha Sarovsky messing around a little bit with the way this front line is playing, bringing Wild inside, putting Reeves out on the right. It changes the dynamics of this team. They get a goal. Sometimes that's all it takes. Saki ties up Bergman, and now he's got possession. And he'll play for the corner kick. And Michigan with another set piece. Remember, they scored their first goal here, their only goal here this afternoon, but they scored that first goal off of a corner kick. It was Daniel Makuna to get his third on the season. And we'll see some deep subs here for both Michigan and Maryland as the starters have invested a lot in this first half hour, 40 minutes of play. We well, see Maryland bringing on a cleat key can play in the midfield, he can play in the back line, maybe making sure he closes out this half with a draw at the very least. Osmond far post, no one's there. And that'll be a goal kick, give everyone a chance to clear out for Maryland anyway, and Michigan will reset at midfield. Dane St. Clair, big play capabilities at 6-4 from Ontario, Canada. He's a part of the uh, U18 Canadian national team. Can play a big ball out, but has of late enjoyed building the possession for Maryland out of the back. He's terrific with his feet. And this is Bergman now on the ball for the Terrapins. Well, I'd like to see this from Maryland. This is more what you expect from Maryland teams. Building it up really nicely out of the back through the midfield. Eric Williamson with terrific footwork. Goes into and comes out of trouble. Works with DJ Reeves and then makes the far run to the far side. Broken up by Mertz. It'll be a throw for Maryland. Nice job, Michigan, there. Closing things out on that side on the throw in. You know, I, I think there's been a couple of slight changes that have helped Maryland find this game a little bit more. I mentioned Gordon Wild coming in centrally, DJ Reeves playing on the right. I think Jake Rosansky, too, has started to play a little bit higher up on the field, getting the ball in that pocket between the right winger and the center forward, giving another option there. And we've seen Williamson tucking inside a little bit more, causing some overloads on the right side, just giving more players getting more players on the ball closer to goal. I mean, we, there are a lot of good players in this Maryland team that are capable of beating you on the dribble, stringing together some passes, and I think that's how this Maryland team is going to break Michigan down, whereas Michigan's more of a vertical team, not necessarily with long balls in the air, but they like to get out and get running right away, and, and I think Maryland will be better suited to keep the ball and build it up a little bit more. DJ, DJ. Eli Cronali is in the match for Maryland. Noah Klipke has been inserted for Michigan up front and in the center. This is Matt DeRosa starting left back for Maryland. 
DJ Reeves has switched sides. He's going to attack on the left side. So interchangeable these Maryland players are. As Miles Stray looks for a penetrating ball, it's broken up by a two ahead. And now coming the other way is Michigan. That slipped ball off the outside of the foot, and Osmond's going to have to guide it to the touch line, but earn the throw in for the Wolverines. Billy Stevens, Red Bull New York Academy product to put it back into play for Michigan. Michigan comfortable to eat a little clock. Farouk Osman threads a ball. Klitke is there. Broken up by Maryland. Looks like they're going to go for the long throw here. We've seen them already once effective with the long throw. Klitke is there. It's going to be headed out, though, by Maryland. And then the second attempt by Stray is headed out. Oh, and that's touched by DeRosa, so that long throw option is available yet again for Michigan. 1-1 here in College Park. It's 1-1 in East Lansing. Four teams with a shot at the Big Ten Championship. Stevens with the throw. Stevens with the service. St. Clair without a challenge. Well, we've seen every bit of drama that this day could give us. I think three different scenarios have already played out in these two games. Here's Wild. He looks to drop it off so he can get forward. Bergman will work with Samuels and now with Stray on the far side. You can see the space here between the midfield line of Maryland and the back line. Somebody needs to come and find the ball in that space in between the lines here. They need to look either here or for a penetrating pass, and they're going to go over the top to find it. But it was the same thing that happened last time Maryland had the ball. We saw Miles Stray look to play that pass, and it didn't go through. And here's the score we were talking about, Indiana-Michigan State. 1-1 one, one in East Lansing, 1-1 one, one here. As it stands right now, there would be a three-way tie atop the Big Ten, which means three co-champions, and we'd go to goal differential for seeding. But there's a lot of game left to be played here in College Park, and we've already seen goals change things four times today, so no one's counting on anything yet. Farouk Osman. Intercepts, and then on the touch, Rosansky gets a piece of his boot. And I can promise you, if this score is 1-1 with about 15, 20 minutes left to go in the second half, I think we're going to see an attacking-oriented team for Michigan, which knows only a win gives it a chance at the Big Ten title in that situation. You can see here the goal differential. Maryland needing to make up a goal, which is why they need a result if it holds as a draw there. Otherwise, it'll be Indiana as the one seed, Maryland the two seed, Michigan State the three seed and Michigan at the four seed. Big ball in's going to get to Stray. Cleet Key's there, but so is St. Clair. That six foot four has no problem with the extension to bring that ball out of danger. Great work by Eli Cronali, the younger brother of Alex Cronali. Eli, a sophomore at Maryland, I think uh, had an appearance earlier in the season where his first touch was a goal against Rutgers. And this one is gonna go ahead and run to the zeros. We've had an exciting first half of play, including an early goal from the visitors. Yeah, I think, I think it played out exactly as Michigan would have hoped in the first 25 minutes or so. You know, at first they were sitting back, kind of feeling the game, and then they, they sensed that they had a little bit of momentum. They started to push forward, got the early goal on the set piece, and didn't really let off the gas at that point. And it looked like the visitors were going to control this game. Credit to Sasha Swarovski and Maryland Terrapins for coming back and getting a goal, though. 
Happy to be joined by Sasha Sarovsky, 25 years at Maryland, and he's been in situations like this before. Coach, the first half of play, you put DJ Reeves in. That paid you guys off, didn't it? He came in and he was active. He you know, saw the loose ball. Gordon got in line. That's one of the things we got to do more of. And it was a dangerous ball. It's slippery, and he, he did a great job of finishing it. Well, Sasha, I know you said earlier this week not doing a lot of scoreboard watching, so I won't even tell you the score right now, but does, do you just want your team to continue playing the way they did, especially the second half of those first 45 minutes? Yeah, it was a little bit of a slow start. You know, Michigan's a very direct team, and they're, they're good on set pieces, and it took us a little while to get into it, but I, I thought we started to move the ball a little bit better, start becoming a little more dangerous, and hopefully we can continue that in the second half. Well, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thanks so much for joining us here. Thanks, guys. Coach Sasha Sarovsky, Maryland Terrapins, 1-1 the score at halftime. Thanks to Daniel Makuna, who finishes the corner kick early on. And then DJ Reeves for the Maryland Terrapins answers back. It is Drama Sunday at College Park. And we've got more to come here on the Big Ten Network. We're back at the house that Sasho built. It is a rainy Sunday afternoon. The fans in support of the Maryland Terrapins and probably some travelers, too, from Michigan. We see some blue out there as well. Thanks to our BTN crew for weathering the storms as well as they bring us great pictures and, uh, well, a great storyline. Uh, with Paul Tenorio, Chris Doran, we have four teams battling for a Big Ten championship this afternoon. But when you look at the way these two teams have played one another in the past with like an undefeated record on the line last year for uh, for Maryland, Michigan really put up a fight. Absolutely. I mean, you love to see the advancement of a young team like Michigan learning how to play these big games. Last year, unfortunate to give up a big goal late. Huge for Maryland Terrapins. They're used to being in these big moments with lots on the line. An undefeated season last year, a Big Ten title on the line this year. Shaka Daly's team, they're growing up. They have something on the line today. Both teams, I thought, living up to those stakes in the first half here in College Park. So in East Lansing, they're at the end of regulation, and the number two team in the country, Indiana and Michigan State, have traded penalty kicks. Trevor Swartz in the first half for Indiana and Ryan Sirikowski in the second half. They are level at one, headed to overtime. This is our regulation score here at College Park, 1-1. So the draws across the board create a scenario if it were all to end right now, a three-way share of the Big Ten Championship. For me, what it means is if there's no change in the score in overtime. It sets up a potentially very exciting second half here at Maryland because both teams know a win gives them the Big Ten title. We'll see how those two teams handle it differently. How much does Michigan push forward in search of that goal? Maryland being the home team probably can be aggressive right off the start, uh, but a, a potentially huge opportunity for both programs in the second half here. But you're right, a three-way tie potentially at the top of the Big Ten. Goal differential would set up the seeding going into the tournament. And we'll see how these two teams respond here for the final 45 minutes. Maryland's trying to right the ship. They've got three games that they would like to maybe forget, or perhaps they've learned lessons from. 1-0 losses to Georgetown and Coastal Carolina, and a 3-0 midweek loss to Dave Gifford's VCU Rams. For the Michigan Wolverines, they're riding pretty high. They've got uh, three victories that they're enjoying, including two recent shutouts. And their young goalkeeper, Henry Mashburn, inserted for those three games has kind of turned things for Michigan. Yeah, you know, a couple things stand out to me from the first half when it comes to those storylines coming into the game. Maryland responding to an early goal down. And I thought Michigan as well playing really well. Francis Atua Henny up top. Today's scores, you see how things have sort of um, been unpacked in the Big Ten. The conference schedulers could not have asked for a better scenario. One versus two, three versus four, five versus six, and seven versus eight. With all due respect to Dan Donegan and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, they had finished their Big Ten regular season schedule and unfortunately finished in the basement in the standings. So they know they have a date next Saturday at the home of the first seed. Big ball in is going to be touched. Well, that could be intentional handling. Marcelo Borges with a very nifty, clean touch and picked up by Henry Mashburn. Well, first off, what a daring touch here by Borges. You have to think he was thinking maybe to clear it out and got a bit fortunate, but I think Maryland very lucky that the ref doesn't blow the whistle for a pass back. I don't think you can call that intentional, but certainly it bordered on something that's worthy of an indirect free kick there inside the six. 
Well, if you're keeping a watch at home, you probably are suspecting that Michigan was late coming out of the locker room, and in fact they were. It is possible that they came out of the locker room and did not dial into the second half right away, and maybe that was a bit of a uh, brain fade on the part of the back line. I mean, again, I mean, Borges is a guy that they really trust there at left back, too. So you, you don't want to see him making those mistakes. Fortunate to get away with it. Now they just need to regroup here, get started here, see if they can replicate the first 20 minutes of the first half here in the second and push this game and be dynamic going forward. Shaka Daly and the Michigan Wolverines in search of their first Big Ten championship. No surprise, Umar Farouk Osman is still in here on this midfield, or I should say front line alignment. He's got Serta and Mertz behind him. The young freshman, the Canadian, or I'm sorry, the Connecticut Gatorade player of the year last year. Well, early on here, it's going to be worth keeping an eye as the game finishes up in overtime in East Lansing, but you've got Osman on the field. It looks like Atua Henny is starting off on the bench. If that first sub is a Tua Henny coming in, it'll be interesting to see whether it's for Osman or for one of the other three midfielders, Merch, Serda, or Ibarra, because that could be an indication of how much Michigan wants to push this game in the second half. And we've got contact on the far side as uh, Billy Stevens is slow to get up after a collision with, I think, Matt DeRosa. I'm a big fan of Billy Stevens. He is a no-nonsense, rough-and-tumble, old-school fullback, not afraid of getting stuck in. Usually he's the one doling out the punishment. Here he stretches in to make the tackle and I think just gets stepped on. It doesn't feel good, but I really like the way Billy Stevens plays, and, and so does Shaka Bailey. I mean, this is a guy he's countered on every single game. Maryland going to pounce right away. Here's the service in, headed up. And a lot of traffic as Mashburn punches the ball away, and there'll be a foul called. There's too many bodies interfering with the goalkeeper. Nice job by Mashburn to try to fight through that traffic and get a fist on the ball, even as a player rolled into his ankles underneath here. Staying strong. A little shove by L. He got the call three games ago. He's been training hard for the entire season, and the young freshman who has featured for the U-17 Honduran national team of the World Cup slips on this goal kick as the rain is picked up here in College Park. And now the counterattack very quickly. Michigan's gonna have to regroup. This is Williamson, far side. Cuts in, lets it go, and the Mashburn save is there. There you see what makes Williamson so dangerous. Looks like he's waiting for numbers to come into the box to serve a cross in. He gets his eye, you see that little quick look, he knows no one's there, cuts in and lets it rip. Good look at goal from Williamson. First save for Mashburn in this match. And Michigan is not appearing to be quite as dialed in as they were at the start of this game. Williamson 1v1 on the far side versus Stevens, and Stevens wins it. Talk a little bit more about Billy Stevens. One of the things I like about him is the fact that he's from Long Island and he exhibits that Long Island attitude he has that I was does. exposed to as a young boy too. And I just, I just love it. He respects, he respects the game, but he plays it hard. I mean, as a coach, you know, when you put together your back line, you want some guys like that, right? That are just gonna really get stuck in, not back down from anybody, not back down from any challenge. It's, it's old school, it is Long Island, New York, New Jersey. You can you get that attitude coming out of him, and I, I, I just respect the way he plays. Baruch Osman's gonna give chase to this service, and we broke it up nicely by Campbell. Mark Post, there's Bergman there. Sadish can't get to it. Serta gets a head ball on it, picked up by St. Clair. On Maryland's back line to be a little bit more physical in the box there, get a little bit more on the clearance. Don't let that ball come back into your box. Created a dangerous opportunity there. Zaki able to get his foot on it. Not a lot of power behind it, but I think that first clearance from Maryland really needs to clear that first 25 yards, get it away from danger. We're talking about a back line that has been beaten up. There are a couple of players not available. Donovan Pines and Chase Casper, these guys 
took some knocks and have not been cleared. Coach Sasha Sarovsky mentioning midweek that the game against Wisconsin, though a 5-4 victory on the road for for the Terrapins really took a toll in terms of injury and they've not been able to bounce back. So they've got some new faces back there, namely with DeRosa and Miles Stray, who's a great defensive sub as we watch George Campbell, who's back after injury, now advancing into the attack. Chris, you talked about that undefeated team from last year. A lot of players coming back this year, but the rebuild really needed to happen on the back line too. Sasha Swarovski needed to add some new faces, some guys to step into roles. I think Bergman's done a really nice job at center back coming in, but Anytime you're changing guys in and out of the back line this late in the season, it's going to cause problems. You lose that chemistry that forms over the course of the season. You lose the experience, and, and it leads to small breakdowns here and there. And, you know, in a games like this with so much on the line, those small breakdowns, they can result in goals. And I think, you know, you, you hope that you have guys like Miles Stray with a little bit of experience to come in, but that certainly is going to be a, a factor for Maryland as they try to get healthy down the stretch here in the Big Ten tournament. Good team defense in a tight space, and a foul will be called as Rosansky goes to the turf, and we'll have a check on a player. George Campbell slow to get up, but he'll put the ball back into play, and now here come Maryland. Bergman working with DeRosa, and now Miles Stray. And it's almost as if now Michigan has decided to throttle back to a 4-5-1. Yeah, I was just going to point that out. I was going to say we talked in the first half about how they were high pressing in that 4-3-3. There you saw it's just Zaki pressuring that back line, not really providing pressure. Everyone else has dropped off and waited until this point. Now you see the pressure coming. Much more conservative from Michigan. Shaka maybe feeling the slow start for his team. Let's survive it. Let's find our way back into the game before we start to throw bodies forward and open self, ourselves up a little bit more. But certainly a different attitude, a different mindset than we saw in the first 25, 30 minutes of the first half from Michigan. Well, we talked about the Big Ten championships and the options that are available in terms of the table and results all pending here this afternoon between these two teams and, of course, Indiana and Michigan State, who have headed to overtime. Uh, but one of the other things we should mention is the importance of the seeding. It's great to be a number one seed because if you are, you'll hope. By the way, it, those four teams will all host next weekend. There's no doubt about that, regardless of the results today. But number one seed will host the winner of the 8-9 game, which is going to be played next Saturday. And so you've got an immediate advantage in that sense as Stray plays the ball back to St. Clair and he clears it long. And then the number two seed and so on until you get to the number four seed. Paul, and you've got the number four seed having to play the ever so dangerous number five team and nobody wants to play Wisconsin. Well that's exactly right when it comes down to that four seed that's Michigan right now by the way they don't want to play John Trask's Wisconsin team it's a dangerous team and that Wisconsin team remember last year was right on the bubble of the NCAA tournament and didn't get in they know how important that first game of the Big Ten tournament is for them this year because they're right back on that bubble very very dangerous first round matchup and that's why it's so important here in the second half. Ball in cleared out by Makuna. Collected nicely by Zaki. And now Borges is going to work with Zaki and get that ball back into the attacking half for Michigan. No. Osman earns the deflection. 1v1 versus Stray. Right, left, and over. And the shot, far side, no cross ball, and oh my, Mohamed Zaki knew how close he was. Really nice job by the freshman, Umar Farouk Osman, on the left side. Isolated, 1v1 here. You see help come, and he just takes a couple dribbles, puts it into the box. Just in front of his teammate, Mohamed Zaki, who almost got a leg to it. And I mean, here's the dynamic. Watch him, just a couple step overs, keep him off you a little bit, wait for the run to come, and just try to serve it into the six. Zaki looks back and says, it was so close. What I like there, though, is the run was right from the freshman, the young freshman. A vertical, getting up the field, into the six, try to be dangerous. A little bit late on the run, but nice job by those two. And nearly creating a goal here for short, Michigan. Short goal kick, and Maryland is going to play quick passing forward to Gordon Wild, who looks to cross the ball. It'll be tied up by Abdu Samaki, and this is going to be a corner kick for Maryland. The brackets as they stand right now. 
And I'll tell you what, you know, as tough as that 4-5 game is for Michigan if it, if it holds and they play Wisconsin, Ohio State, winless in their last nine, eight straight losses. But this is the team that started off the season really, really well, and it's just remarkable what's happened to them in the back half of the season. But, you know, when they're playing well, we saw what they were capable of, and, and it's just really crazy to see what's happened to the Buckeyes here in the back half of the year. You see how hard it's raining at College Park. The elements that the players are dealing with and the head ball out and the Makuna drop to the floor. And this is Miles Stray and Billy Stevens giving him a talk to. Yeah, that's right. Billy's just sort of, he's also a defense attorney. Uh, and he's putting, <laughs> up, he's putting up a defense for his teammate there, Daniel Makuna. Well, you can just see the value of Makuna, by the way. I mean, every head ball in the box basically has been won by Makuna. But, yeah, I mean, the shoulder from Stray into the back of Makuna, he had no chance at that ball. And Billy Stevens, first one to step up and say, hey, buddy, don't do that to my teammate. Things are becoming just a bit direct here. And here's Gordon Wilde, who breaks it open. Nice work by Samaki to slow him down, but he's looking for the left foot and gets the shot off. Mashburn's there. Yeah, I mean, look at this big ball over the top. Wild gets onto it. So dangerous, but you're right. Samaki does a really nice job reading the angle, getting in front of him, making him cut back, and he gets the shot off, but it was a shot challenged by two defenders. And there you see the value of those two at center back for Michigan. Both of them did a really nice job on that counter. Gordon Wild with some real estate ahead of him. Samake's there, and that ball's cleared out by Makuna. Going to the second overtime in East Lansing, Indiana, and Michigan State tied at one. Both teams sharing a pair of penalties. Trevor Schwartz converts in the first half. Ryan Sarakowski converts in the second half. We talked about Maryland and their back line, the injuries that have happened there. I think it's been huge to get Makuna back into the middle of the back line for Michigan. They've had to rotate him a bit. He had a shoulder injury he picked up earlier in the year. Jackson Reagan has stepped in and played center back at times, but he's a different type of player. Very good on the ball with the ball at his feet. Makuna is such a big physical presence, and that's been such a huge plus in a game like this with bad weather, a lot of free kicks, and obviously he got the goal. Farouk Osman down, courtesy of George Campbell, and that's a restart for Michigan. Goal scoring got started early in this one, courtesy of a corner kick. And look at Makuna flashing across the six, nearly goes beyond the near post, but able to get his head on it. And it was in the second part of the first half that Maryland found the game a bit more. The substitute DJ Reeves comes on, gets a big goal bring it back to 1-1 and give both teams a big opportunity here in the second half to play potentially for a Big Ten championship. Mark Ibarra, one goal, three assists on the season. He's responsible for this restart for Michigan. This has been such a big theme in this game, hasn't it? We've seen free kicks, corner kicks, throw-ins play a big role in chances in this rain. I think the back lines for both teams have handled it pretty well other than that early goal, but we keep seeing these fouls in dangerous places that allow dangerous opportunities for both teams. Ibarra with the service. It's a feisty mixing bowl there of competitive players who all know what's on the line, a Big Ten championship. Especially if that game in East Lansing remains 1-1 at the end of the second overtime period, then the winner of the Big Ten Championship could be right here in College Park. Cheeky. Williamson slots the ball through. Is Rosansky onside? Maybe Elney lets it go. The ball goes wide thanks to Mashburn. Best buildup of the game for Maryland. They've looked really dangerous. Williamson with a good ball, and Elney lets it go. Nice little play back to him in the freshman, Henry Mashman. This is the guy who's come in just three games ago, two shutouts in three games, and look at that save. Full stretch down to his right. Takes a second to think, did I get my hand on it enough? Yes, I think I did. What a big, big save for Mashburn. 
Maryland corner kick. Mashburn is feeling it this afternoon. Big time punch out. Elney leaves it looking for Wild. Makuna is going to go ahead and leave it for his goalkeeper, who is showing every bit of maturity here. Listed as a freshman, but count him as a veteran. I like to see his style. It's kind of a Latin American style of goalkeeping. He prefers the punch to trying to catch it. Makes me think of some of the better Mexican goalkeepers. Even if you look in Costa Rica, Kaylor Navas, he's become a little bit more of a European style goalkeeper at Real Madrid. But you know, we've seen Mashford several times go with a punch. I think that was a two-handed punch there from the Honduran under-17 keeper. Stevens and Williamson share the sprint to the goal line, and Mashburn gets the goal kick. Conditions are not improving. In fact, we should mention that Sasha Sarovsky opened the door to the possibility of moving this game this afternoon in order to avoid this very situation, playing in a heavy downpour that he knew was coming. what the rain can do to games like this. It makes for sloppy moments and potentially sloppy goals. And as the home team, you're going to have the advantage, you think, especially if you're Maryland, you don't want to let the game turn into a wide open affair where there's tons of opportunities on both ends. Elney slots a ball through and Wild is offside. But there was no avoiding this rain in College Park here today. And it's picking up. It's going to continue this entire game. I think the conditions of the field are going to continue to deteriorate. We've seen players lose their footing a couple times. You've got to imagine they've got the long, soft ground cleats in to try to hold their footing on that field. Now Michigan is eking this one. I, You know, you almost feel like they want to keep it level in a rainy situation here. Keep the score level until they're ready to bring a Tuahenny back out onto the field and lo and load up that front line. Uh-oh. Rosansky could chip the keeper. Mashburn is out, and the tackle is in the open field by Makuna. Daniel Makuna, the junior out of England, he has been, for me, the player of the game for Michigan. He's been all over the place, scored the goal, and a huge defensive presence. I mean, for a guy his size to move the way he did and catch up on the counter and make the tackle in a key moment in the box, you've got to get that right, and he did. Sadich gets the luck of the deflection, and now he needs some assistance. He'll get it from the back line as Bergman works the ball to DeRosa. Well, I'll tell you what, Daniel Makuna is a big boy to handle on set pieces on the offensive side of things, but... He's been so good defensively as well. Build up for Maryland. Looking to go at it again. Will they run into a trouble? Yes, they will. Billy Stevens. How about Daniel Makuna and the saves and the way he has put his mark on this match? Well, we saw early the goalkeeper. We said Mashburn likes to punch it. He punches it in the wrong spot there. Daniel Makuna waiting there to save his goalkeeper. And here he's chasing down Rosansky. Look at just uses his shoulder to get a little bit of space to make the tackle with his left foot. Gets the ball and ends the threat for Maryland. He's just been so good defensively today. Terrapins Helmy gets a head on it, and Mashburn is able to snuff that one out. Four saves on the afternoon. Henry Mashburn. You know, you were mentioning how. Michigan might be approaching this half. I think I have a feeling they're waiting for the score to go final in East Lansing before they decide to go go for the game. There's three minutes left in the second overtime. I would imagine the Tua Henny is getting up and warming up right about now. If the game remains 1-1 there in East Lansing, we see a Tua Henny getting ready to come in now. I think that's the green light for Michigan to really try to find this game. Campbell beats five players and then gets the whistle. We've seen him do it a couple of times in this match. George Campbell, a converted midfielder. He wears the captain's armband for a lot of reasons, but mostly because Sasha Sarosky knows what kind of a leader he is. He understands the Maryland way. Well, it's very hard to find right backs that can do this. Everyone, it's not too hard to overlap as a right back and be dangerous going forward. What's different about Campbell is he can come inside with the ball on his feet, 
dribble at you, make you make bad decisions. We've seen him one, two, three times now draw fouls by carrying the ball inside, and it's a bit of the broadcaster's curse there as well. We're praising Daniel Makuna. He's forced into a foul in a bad spot, and giving Maryland a really good look at goal here about 25 yards out, but you're right. It comes down to George Campbell's ability as a right back to carry the ball forward, come inside and allow players around him to overlap and create overloads and force defenders into big decisions. This is Gordon Wild's territory. I know Amar Sadich is standing over the ball, but Wild with the left foot could tuck it into the near post. Wild near post. It oh. goes wide. I'll tell you what, I think Mashburn wasn't sure if that ball was in or not. He lined up way over on his far post, by the way, and you were right. You knew the left-footed curler was coming from Gordon Wild, and he does not miss by much. Inside of that post, holding up the box goal, off the billboard behind, and it looks like it's in the net, and you can see, look, the sigh of relief, relief from Mashburn. He actually lets out a really nice long sigh and says, woo, I survived that one. So Wild nicks paint off the outside of the post, and you have to wonder, if he gets another crack at that, does he fix it? Gordon Wild, 17 goals last year, a Mac Herman Trophy finalist, and this year, you know, it's been tough. Five goals. He's been dinged up and injured just a bit. Didn't start a couple of games, and he's been a tough. He's been in a tough situation through the course of the season. And it's tough. I mean. You, on one hand, you, you're counting on the guy to be the goal scorer, but as the season wears on and, you know, as you said, just five goals this year, what do you say to a goal scorer if you're Sasha Sarovsky? You want him to be confident going into the postseason. You hope that he starts to find his goal-scoring touch again, but, you know, they were really hoping he could replicate last season as a Herman Trophy finalist. It just hasn't happened this year. Heat work up the middle from Marky Barra, who's now in the attacking half of the field, and Henry Hallahan is behind him with possession. Ivo Serda, Hallahan switches the point of attack. This is Borges. Collection on the run, and it's cleared out by Maryland. Wild is on his horse. He's going to have to deal with Makuna. Collected by Samake, and he'll turn it away from pressure anyway. The penetrating pass to the midfield. Borges, who could have been on the U-20s with Williamson were he not nicked up. You were talking about Billy Stevens in the Long Island attitude. Borges coming out of Kearney, New Jersey. Just a bit of soccer history in that town. No kidding. Tab Ramos, Tony Miola, John Harks. Not too much to live up to, right? Exactly. Makuna does not have to give that foul, but he does. And Wild earns the whistle at midfield. Well, Makuna's physical presence. Well, it's a tough. It looks like he just loses his footing, and Borges is not happy about it because he saw the cleats slip out from under him there. Michigan State and Indiana finishing up in East Landing, Lansing as... Mashburn comes out, makes himself big, still loose. Hallahan coming out with that ball, and he'll play it wide to Osman, who can't get to it. Collected by Williamson, and the whistle blows. Indiana and Michigan State have ended the final regular season game for the, both of those teams. They are locked at 1-1. And so each team earns one point. That gives Indiana 18 on the table. It gives Michigan State 18 on the table. Currently, Maryland has 17 points, and Michigan has 16. So a win by either one of these teams gives them the outright Big Ten championship as we get set for a restart for Maryland. 22 minutes left. Big Ten title on the line here. Bergman, big ball in. Loose ball is headed away. Borges is going to play Hallahan. Look at him, Billy Stevens doing the hard work deep in the six, and here comes Farouk Osman the other way. Open field, Atua Henny is in. And Paul, just as you called it, the cross ball is going to be collected inside and cleared out, just as you called it. 
The game ends in East Lansing, and here comes a two of Henning. Oh, we knew that Shaka Daly was waiting for the right moment to bring in his team that he feels is his most attack-oriented team. You've got Zaki out there, Atua Henny. You've got Osman on the field as well. I think we'll see Jack Hallahan coming back into this game at some point so that he has all four of his players on the field at once, along with Ivo Serda and probably Robbie Mertz. I would imagine that is the most attacking unit you'll see. And here we go, Mertz is gonna come in. I would imagine at some point too, we see that, but you now have your fastest front line available, and you're gonna start to push this game. Wild gets a shot off, deflected. Farouk Osman and Hallahan, oh, and the whistle. So there it is, sorry, Hallahan is on the field, so now you're bringing Mertz in. I think you probably take Ibarra out of the game, and you start to push the tempo. The danger, of course, is what have we seen here in the second half so far? Maryland's had the better of the play. They pushed this game a little bit more. There have been moments where Michigan's been opened up. So you're taking a risk, and it's a calculated risk if you're Shaka Daly, because guess what? A loss doesn't change things for you. You're in that four seed already. You have a chance to win a Big Ten title with a goal. Rosansky and Bergman are gonna stand over the ball. Rosansky with his right, Bergman with his left. Watch the far post for the target. Oh, man. Burn does well to stay with that ball as it slips through his gut. Here's what you can expect to see. If Mertz comes back into this game, I think you'll see Ibarra come out, Jackson Reagan coming in as the holding midfielder. And now you've got six, six attacking-minded players on the front line if you're Michigan. Through ball, Rosansky's on the run. Samaki's out there, he's gonna go 1v1 defensively with him, he'll hold him up, it's collected by Farouk Osman. Quick outlet ball, Hallahan makes the run across midfield. He's got it to a Henny, or he could go to the other side, Mohamed Zaki, far post, and it's gonna be Dane St. Clair who lets it go. And that is the dynamic runs of this team. We talked about the angle of runs, right? Jack Hallahan gets the ball on the right side, he comes inside and makes the defender stop and hold his run. How dangerous is Robbie Mertz? The babyface assassin is the nickname Dean Linky gave him, and it's because of this. Farouk Osman, late in that game against Indiana, the slip head. And Robbie Mertz beats one of the best goalkeepers in the country, Indiana's Trey Muse, to draw level with the home team, and they get out of there with one point, a tough place to play for Michigan. That's when the Wolverine season seemed to really change, or if there were any doubters in the locker room, they certainly understood what was before them, a chance to get to this afternoon where they're playing for a Big Ten championship. And we've seen the changes now. Jackson Reagan sliding into that number six spot. Robbie Mertz playing underneath the strikers. Osman coming in as a true number eight. So we have a front line of Atua Henny, Zaki, and Hallahan ahead of Osman and Mertz with Jackson Reagan sitting in front of that back line to provide a little bit of balance so they don't give up too much on the defensive side. Marcella Burgess, long throw. Elney gets ahead on it, the slip head through, and this is Gordon Wild with the heel ball. Oh my, how about Elney? Made that run from the goal line, and he's gonna get, I'm sorry, that's DJ Reeves, the goal scorer for Maryland from the first half. Reeves was off to the races, and Mertz holds, his, holds him up. I don't know, I have to see this again, but I think the ref bails out Michigan here up. Uh, shoulder to shoulder, depends on how you look at it. Maybe I have a defensive mindset. I say that's no foul, but certainly I can see what the ref saw there. I, I like DJ Reeves attacking that ball the way he did. I don't know that that's a foul. I think he just gets his body in front. Daniel Makuna, the goal scorer for Michigan on the restart as a corner kick in the first half is gonna stand over the ball now for the Wolverines. Big ball in. And Hallahan is going to get to it with Reeves to beat. Hallahan looks for his right foot. Cross ball cleared out by Bergman. Well, we've already seen just in the last two or three minutes, Maryland look a little bit more pinned back than they have all second half after the subs by Michigan. Robbie Mertz goes to the goal line, gets a cross in, and it's gonna go to the goal line, and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Maryland. Well, you mentioned that we've got Jackson Reagan, who's been admitted into the uh, 11. 
as we watch Robbie Mertz make that turn on DJ Reeves. Nice job by Mertz, and it looks like it is actually a corner kick that they've given. You can see it went off of Bergman, I believe. My mistake. Here's Jackson Reagan, six foot five. He's a big target now for Michigan, inserted into the Wolverine lineup. Hallahan will serve the ball from the corner. Near post. It's going to be cleared by Elney. Another corner kick coming Michigan's way. Big Ten Championship is on the line. Available to either one of these teams with a victory tonight. Hallahan. Near post. Elney again. Collected outside. Mertz with the shot. Second chance. Bouncing around. A two ahead with a shot and it's saved by St. Clair. Well, you can see the great Dane, Dane St. Clair with a huge save, but this comes because the ball is bouncing around the box again for Maryland, staying alive. And Atua Henny lines it up and cracks it. Nice job by St. Clair to see this through the traffic. You can actually see it opened up in front of him, allowed him to see that shot coming. Big, big opportunity there for Michigan. We've talked about it before. Maryland allowing that ball to bounce around in its box opens up those opportunities. Farouk Osman will give chase. Miles Stray will end the run for him. It'll be a throw in for Michigan. St. Clair stood on his head early in the season against UCLA. For my money, put his name on the collegiate goalkeeping map. I've compared him to Zach Steffen, who was a one year player here at Maryland, now plays professionally for Columbus Crew SC. Here's the throw from Billy Stevens for Michigan. Baruch Osman gets a touch. Mertz comes in. The loose ball is picked up by St. Clair. I'll tell you what. We spent a lot of time talking about the attacking front three of Zaki, Atuahenny, Hallian, even Osman, and what they can provide. But in the last five minutes, it's been Robbie Mertz that's had all the energy. He's been all over the place, creating opportunities, bombing into the box, putting his head in on tackles, not afraid of anything. He wants this. You can see that he wants it. The junior is not afraid to push forward and push the tempo of this game. And I think Maryland wants to slow this game down. Michigan's not going to let him. And you can see Robbie Mertz is leading the way, making sure they're pushing this game. Two goals, three assists on the year. Robbie Mertz in the midfield is Michigan. Builds through the traffic that Maryland's creating right up the middle, and Bergman's going to get this ball forward. It'll be re won or won back by Michigan. I'll tell you, the center back pairing for Michigan today, for me, has been fantastic. That's Sama K going all the way to the midfield line to step and win that ball there. Atua Henny on the left side. Can't get to that ball before he heads over the goal line, and St. Clair will distribute. Certainly he'll want to do better there, but I think that was a bit of a footing issue as he tried to plant his right foot and get the cross in on a wet surface. Borges looks up, can't find a target, plays it back to Reagan. As you mentioned earlier, Paul, giving us the preview, as Reagan comes in as that holding mid. It's kind of a faux holding mid. I mean, he's six foot five. He's not a guy who's He's not a Mark Ibarra or an Ivo Serta in terms of his distribution and his head on a swivel, but he does have that big time physical pre presence and is the target on many set pieces in the waiting moments of this game. I mean, it's a nice luxury to have if you're a coach, right? You bring in a number six who's gonna help you defensively, but then adds in danger on set pieces late in the game to give you a bit of both. And here we see Mertz, we talked about his energy and how into this game is. He avoids the ref and comes in a bit late on the tackle, earning the yellow card. I think Burst might have had a glance at the ref and saying, hey, I only caught his heel because you were in my way trying to get to the ball there. Birch gets the yellow. Callahan is sitting on yellows. Marky Barra is sitting on yellows. And, and in college soccer, if you get four, you're kind of in a cautionary situation because your fifth means you've got to sit a game. Yeah, it's an interesting situation. There's no chance to have the good behavior knocking a yellow card off. So over the course of a whole season, if you pick up a yellow here the last game of the season and your previous yellow was 10 weeks ago, but it, it won't matter. There's no there's no way to erase a yellow. So it's, it's, it's a tough, tough ask, especially for those defensive midfielders like Ibarra. Mashburn with a goal kick. 
Reagan collects, or at least gets ahead on it. Mertz brings it down under control. Farouk Osman now, always looking up and always looking to run. Scott Borges. Combi combination with a Tua Henny, and it's going to be knocked away by Maryland as the Terrapins look to launch a counterattack. Gordon Wilde's got to come back on side, and Reagan is going to get the whistle. They call him for the shove here. I actually thought he did a nice job to at first slow it. To me, that was the foul right there, pulling the shirt. And the whistle doesn't sound until that little shove right there, but. He gets the yellow card on the whistle. Seattle Sounders U18 team. Best soccer player of our three center backs, says Shaka Daly. The freshman with one goal inserted late in this one. This is why Mertz is so important right now in this lineup. He's going to be a guy that's got to be have a presence defensively in midfield when you have so many attacking pieces. You can see him dropping here to the top of the box. Reeves 1v1 with Stevens and now Hallahan and now drop back. This is Samake who's going to knock it long, make it easy for Stray to gobble it up. Bergman now going long. Elning for Maryland. 1v2. Samake does a nice job with the help of Billy Stevens to deny Elney. It'll be a throw for Maryland. Michigan State and Indiana drew 1-1 this afternoon. That game is over. With a win this afternoon, Maryland will the, be the Big Ten champion. Likewise, with a win this afternoon, Michigan will be the Big Ten champion. And they will own the title outright. Here's Rosansky. Looking to combine, Mertz breaks it up. Hallahan is gonna go ahead and step forward. Get pressure right away from Williamson. Pop it outside to Farouk Osman, who's gonna keep it in. And on the run, tied up by Williamson. A tactical foul that earns him a yellow card. I actually think it was, as you said, a smart play by Williamson there. Michigan turns, they're a very vertical team. They get forward very quickly. Maryland had thrown some numbers forward and Williamson was looking at that situation as he ran back and didn't like what he saw numbers wise. Made the foul, slowed the counter attack. Yes, he took the yellow card, but it was the right move there at this point in the game. But again, Chris, we've talked about this all game long. Michigan has looked very dangerous on set pieces, and they're going to have another chance to get a dangerous ball into the box here with this free kick. Big service is short. Going to be headed out by Williamson. DJ Reeves collides with Billy Stevens, and that's going to be a whistle. Two valuable pieces to the puzzle for both respective coaches and programs, and you want to see both of these guys get back up. Here's Stevens, collision. He calls this foul against Stevens, and I think Stevens got the worst of it. I understand Williamson was getting ready to go the other way, but he caught a cleat on the shin there. Does not feel good if you're Billy Stevens. Two pretty strong and powerful players as these programs are typically finding themselves with great talent landing on campus. I'm really interested to see here. Ten minutes left. Michigan's made the changes that they knew they were going to go to, that they've trained for this moment. I mean, Shaka Daly had a plan exactly what he wanted to do if it was 1-1 in that other game, if it was a draw. Ten minutes left. They've, they've had the better of play here for the last 10 or 15 minutes or so. And this little break... It gives you something you don't have often in soccer, a timeout. 
a chance for Sasha Swarovski to get his team over, talk about how he wants to organize, how he wants to play. Same for Shaka Daly, of course. But I, I think this is a good moment for Maryland to be able to calm things down, find the game a little bit more at home, and see if they can get a goal. Because they've been chasing the game a bit more in the last, like I said, the last 15 minutes or so. Well, Billy Stevens is being helped off by a teammate and the athletic trainer. Here's the situation now, given that the result in Michigan, between Michigan State and Indiana is done. If you earn a win, Michigan, you are the number one seed. Maryland, if you earn the win, you are the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament. And if you get a loss, you're a fourth seed in this game. And if you earn a draw, Maryland is going to benefit as the second seed. Michigan will remain the fourth seed and have to face off against Wisconsin next Sunday. Well, that to me is the key. You circle the difference between what Maryland sees if a win, a loss, or a draw, and what Michigan sees if a loss and a draw. Michigan has everything to play for to throw things forward and get a goal. It's the difference between a four and a one seed. Maryland, on the other hand, knows a draw puts them as a two seed. All right, so with this injury to Billy Stevens, we'll see Jackson Reagan, I think, get moved. Nope, he's going to still stay, in, stay up there. Both players had to be removed from the playing surface because of injury. Here's Robbie Mertz now. Ten minutes to go in this one in a Big Ten championship. Farouk Osman with a ball to a Tua Henny. He's going to have to keep this one in and then turn and look for his assistance in the form of Robbie Mertz. And a goal kick. Like a wrecking ball, Robbie Mertz comes in, gets up in the air, looking to get his head on this one. Good ball in by a Tua Henny. Here comes Mertz. Not the biggest guy on the field, I can tell you that much, but he has been doing this since he came into the game in the second half, just throwing his body all over the place, doing what he can to try to will his team to a victory here tonight. It's the reason he's wearing that captain's armband. Miles Stray in Maryland. Big ball up. Should mention too that we we still have a DeRosa on the left side for Maryland in the back, but it's Ben DeRosa, Matt DeRosa's brother. Looks like Peter Brown came in at right back. We were trying to figure out what that change was for Michigan. So Brown slides into the right back spot. Here's Allowed Hallahan. Michigan to keep the midfield the same for now. Farouk Osman's going to be in traffic as he turns away from pressure and goes to the open field. Hampered in the process by Williamson and Samuels. And these many battles have been many throughout the course of this afternoon. This game has been wide open too, rest assured. Francis Atua Henning. Ivo Serta outside finds Borges. Borges, far post, is going to overshoot his target. Well, you can tell, you can see Zaki telling him, hey, put the ball here in front of me where I can run onto it. Borges did a nice job kind of spinning and getting the ball into the box, but just to take another second to just get your head up and take a look before you serve this ball in and just over the reach of Zaki. I've been impressed too with what I've seen from Osman since he's come into the game in that number 10 role. He does a pretty good job of keeping the ball and finding the most dangerous guy in the counterattack. Mohamed Zaki looking for a Tua Henning. Boy, if you've only watched the last three minutes of this game, you kind of know what the game plan is for Michigan. Right? Tua Henning and then Dean St. Clair. Comes up big on the cross ball, and there he was, Farouk Osman, the target. Well, as you said, I mean, the ball has been finding its way to Francis Tua Henning for a reason. He's the most dangerous player on the field for Michigan, and you can see there, it's not just his goal scoring ability, gets his head up, looks, finds that cross, Osman was bombing into the box, tried to get his head onto it, and just not enough, a little bit too much distance between him and the goal there, and a, a really nice job by St. Clair to gather that cross. Jackson Reagan breaks that play up. Samaki finds Serda. Tua Henney started this season with an injury. He had to be eased into the season. So he wasn't available from the start. Here's Hallahan who has just been tremendous for Michigan. And as the rain has eased up a bit here at Ludwig Field, the game has opened up. Borges does well to read that ball from Williamson. 
So too the other way. George Campbell reading the service to Atua Hennig. I mean, Borg just took a risk there. He stepped into the space. He didn't commit fully yet, and he did put himself in the passing lane, but it was a real risk because there was a winger overlapping there, and I think if Williamson had laid the ball inside more, Michigan was exposed. Instead, Borg just stays in that passing lane, intercepts the ball, and goes the other way. Less than six to play. Borges with the throw in to Zaki, who's going to leave it for a two Henny. The shot goes up and wide. A Big Ten championship is on the line here this afternoon as Michigan State and Indiana have finished level at 1-1. So each team earns a point. If either one of the teams you're watching right now earns three out of this match with a victory, be it in regulation or in overtime, they are the Big Ten champions. St. Clair, big ball. Nicely done on the ball through, and it's going to be sent back by Michigan. Williamson with something special. Lays it out to the outside. DJ Reeves gets introduced to Daniel Makuna. Borges in transition with Williams chasing. Williamson changed chasing. In front of the Maryland bench, the whistle blows, and there's at least one person on the bench not happy. Well, I think anytime you see a tackle where the ball is still at the foot of the defender, you question whether it's a foul, and I, I just don't think you can call a foul there. I mean, it's a dangerous spot. Williamson comes in, is able to get the ball. Yes, his body is in into Borges a bit there, but for me, that's at this level, that's a good tackle. Well, really let's see what let's see what comes of it. I mean, this is a restart now where you've got a six foot five target on the far side in Jackson Reagan, and this service from a very seasoned Marcelo Borges could be trouble for Maryland. You can hear Sasha Swarovski. He wants Williamson cutting off that ball that would drop in at the penalty spot. Borges, just beyond the penalty spot, is going to be collected by, I think that was Reeves, and it'll be cleared. Michigan looking for their first Big Ten championship. Maryland looking for their third. Teams can respond accomplish that respective goal with uh, a victory this afternoon, which sounds easy when the announcer says it, but it's been a battle all afternoon. Relatively wide open game. And in terms of what you're seeing at this point, who's enjoying the better of the rhythm, Paul? I think it's been Michigan. You know, they made the attacking oriented sub. They've subs. They've really pushed the game. You can see it's starting to get wide open here. Every time Maryland steps forward and tries to get the game back a little bit, get that goal, they open themselves up in counterattacking situations against the team that thrives in those scenarios. And it's a bit odd to talk about it because to say Michigan's at Ludwig, Ludwig Field with the Big Ten title on the line dictating the game, I don't think many people would have predicted that at the beginning of the year. Indeed, at the beginning of the year, Maryland was expected to win the regular season championship. Farouk Osman is going to lock it low. The shot goes up and over. I'll tell you what, Osman has been really good in this number 10 role since they've made the sub. Does a really nice job keeping the ball in his feet, being dangerous. It's been his distribution until this point. A nice left-footed shot. Unfortunately, doesn't get on frame. I mean, it, as he gets older, you're going to want to see those shots come on frame a bit more. But you know, what's exciting about this Michigan team, not just the way they're playing here today, but a lot of these pieces are going to be back for years to come. Atua Henning, who has been the core of the process, serves a ball in. Loose ball. Hallahan can't get around it. Brings it back out. And Dean St. Clair with a save. Tua Henney has been the focus of the resurgence here in the last 20 minutes. And he's been the target of a lot of long balls into the attacking third. Billy Stevens, big ball. Who gets to it first? Who gets to it second? Farouk Osman lays it off for a Tua Henney. Left-footed shot is blocked by Campbell. 
Wow, you said it. Atua Henny has been the guy. He gets it on the left side, puts it into the box. Zaki trying to keep a hold. It bounces around in the box. Hallahan gets up and looks for the shot. Osman waiting there saying, I'm open here for a shot. I'm facing the goal. But man, what an opportunity here for Michigan and a really nice job by Dane St. Clair to come out and get his foot on that shot, not allowing Hallahan to get the angle again because the defenders were on the ground. Great recognition, I think, from St. Clair in that moment. Would the junior Marcelo Borges love his uh, second assist on the season with this service on the corner kick? The ball goes up and, oh, it's cleared off the line by Rosansky. Another corner kick for Michigan. Chance after chance here. Rosansky being staying hold on the post here. And Atua Henny gets the header all the way to the far post. St. Clair saying thank you to his teammate. Good job to hold there. But another opportunity for Michigan. And I... I'm saying every set piece today has been dangerous. Well, Borges a little liberal with his ball placement. And that ball is placed up and goes down. For those of you who maybe aren't aware, the, the ball has to be at some point touching that white arc. And it appeared as though he was maybe playing, playing the distance game just a little bit. You know, it's funny, every little advantage you look for in this game, even if it's one or two inches, setting the ball up just where you want it to be. Through ball. DJ Reeves, the goal scorer for Maryland, gets tied up. Gordon Wild comes in to help. Lacuna gets the first clearance. Rosansky's going to go 1v1 with Serda. A two ahead, he comes all the way back. And making the run the other way now. And how about Rosansky? The work he does in the midfield, unbelievable. He won the NCAA tournament with Virginia back in 2014. Last year had three goals, eight assists. He's got four goals, eight assists this year. Rosansky's been tremendous for Maryland. And regulation is going to wrap up. 1-1 is our score. Of course we'll have OT, coach. Well, you know that's what's going to happen in a game like this with all the stakes in the line, both teams surviving a little bit in this game, both teams trying to push a little bit in this game. We knew we could have a potential three-way tie atop the Big Ten going in. As it stands, that's how it's going to finish, but we've got some time to change that in overtime, and the way Michigan's been playing in the second half, they don't want this to end. We'll see which script is written for the overtime session as players have already put their mark on regulation. And we've got some OT soccer to play on the last day of the regular season in Big Ten men's soccer. More on the way. And we're back at College Park, Maryland, where the rain has subsided, but the competition has not won one at the end of overtime, or at the end of regulation, I should say. This is how we got here. Well, both goalkeepers have been called upon to make big saves. We've got the young Henry Mashburn for Michigan. Look at that save, full stretch with the right arm. He's also been active coming out, closing the angle, making big saves. Big moment for him and he knows it. And on the other hand, Dane St. Clair a few times. First, Atua Henny as he starts to become more active, making the big save. And you can see here for me on the cross, it's a recognition of the moment to come out of his goal and close down this angle on Hallahan to keep the score 1-1 at the end of 90 minutes. Well, if you win this afternoon, Maryland Terrapins, you're the number one seed in the Big Ten champion. Michigan, by the way, has the same scenario if they get that victory, and they will enjoy their first Big Ten championship. But if you lose Michigan, you're the fourth seed next week. Same for Maryland. If you draw tonight at the end of, or at the end of overtime, it's a four seed and a two seed. And I think we've seen the difference in mentality. There's more at stake for Michigan to get a win here. If they lose, it doesn't change their seeding. For Maryland, if you lose, you go from a two seed to a four seed. So I think you have to be a bit more conservative. And the last 17 minutes of the game showed that Michigan outshot Maryland 6-0 in that stretch. They're really looking for the three points in the win because they know that's the only way for them to move up in the standings. So the overtime rules as we enter two 10-minute periods will it will end when a goal is scored. A little thing we like to call sudden victory. Uh, and if neither team scores, then the game ends in a draw. Each team would then get one point in the standings, and we would have Indiana, Michigan State, and Maryland enjoying 
a share of the Big Ten Championship. And yes, they would all get banners and they'd all get t-shirts. In overtime, Michigan is 2-1-2 throughout the course of the season. Maryland is 1-0-1 in overtime. With everything on the line here in overtime, I think there's two players, one from each team, I want to point out. Francis Atuahene, as you said earlier, been injured a lot of this season, just 715 minutes played this year going into the game, only four goals scored. But you can see him starting to gain confidence as this game wears on. He's going to continue to be an active part of what Michigan's trying to do here in overtime. And this week, Sasha Swarovski was talking about Eric Williamson, wanting him to take on more of that leadership role, to carry this team forward in the postseason. And I think you want Eric Williamson to really be active here in overtime, see if he can get on the ball more, even if it's just to slow down the game in certain parts. Indeed, Sasha Sarovsky saying, when Williamson is at his best, he inspires all of us. And when it appears as though Williamson is taking a break, sometimes that's the wrong signal that the Terrapins interpret. Williamson has shown flashes of brilliance tonight throughout the course of the season. And looking for more of that now as the rain has begun to pick up. And the teams begin the overtime session. Andrew Samuel is on the dribble in the open field. And here's George Campbell. I'm calling for a bad throw, I think. I actually think both boots were on the paint, or both boots were beyond the paint, I should say. Both boots actually can be on the paint in a throw, and it's still a legal throw. It's not often we get to talk about where you put the ball on a corner kick and where you put your feet on the throw-in <laughs> in the same right. game, but... I'll tell you what, the, the, the pictures that our BTN crew have brought us through the elements this afternoon have been phenomenal. Here he is, yeah, both feet are on the field. Um, if he had one foot just on the line, boy, that's a great catch by our crew. If he had one foot solely on the line and one foot on the field, that's still a legal throw. Fantastic stuff and great awareness from the assistant referee too as Borges puts this back into play. Big ball headed out. Rosansky's going to get the follow-up. And then the clearance. Samake so at midfield and Elney will collect. DeRosa back to St. Clair. And in these elements, all sorts of mistakes can come at a moment when you're not expecting them. For sure, and they can happen anywhere in the field. I mean, one player loses his footing in the wrong moment and it leads to a counter going the other way. Ball that skips in the box. Wild versus Reagan. Wild gets it off and it's inside and left. Williamson can't get around Stevens. Well, Mashburn knows there's danger if you let the ball bounce in your box. He's not happy he doesn't get cleared here at the front by the defender, but I mean, that, that for me is one of the better moments we've seen from Maryland early on since probably about the 25 minute mark left in the second half, finally getting a dangerous ball into the box. And you can see the footing is an issue in that box. So the more you can get service, the more you have a chance of something good happening for you. Second time Henry Mashburn has put that ball back into the play on a, on a dead ball and has lost his footing. Not that you need to hear it anymore from the crew behind you, but every time you slip, you get a little bit more heckling from the fans. For sure. Ashburn's been up to the test here this evening, as, as you pointed out during the break with the saves that we've seen from him, the young freshman unwavering in the pressure that Maryland has brought. This is Rosansky. And the through ball as he runs the combination play and looks to cross it, broken up by Samake, and this will be a corner kick as Sadich heads to the far side here at Ludwig Field. Eight assists this season for Rosansky, 16 in his career. You can see why. Good ideas every time he's on the ball. Is the set piece the answer? Sadich, the long ball, headed out. That's why he's there. 
Jackson Reagan, big time frame, and we've got an open field bit of contact there. Hallahan held up by Sadich and a whistle. Oh, it's, it's okay if you're Maryland and give up the foul there. We've seen it way too often on the other half of the field. You're going to stop the counter, try to stop it early on. Don't let them get forward before you commit the foul. We've seen how dangerous they are on set pieces here today. After a conference championship won in his last year in the ACC, Sasha Sarovsky came in and does the same business in the Big Ten, either winning a conference tournament, a conference championship, or both in the first three years here in the Big Ten. But you talk to every coach in the Big Ten and they will say it is a blessing that Sasho and the Maryland Terrapins are a part of the conference. They make us better. The profile is higher. And the competition is better than it's been ever before. I don't know that there's been a bigger benefit of Maryland's move to the Big Ten than in men's soccer because of what Maryland soccer has been under Sasha Swarovski and what they brought to this conference. A class coach, a fantastic organization, and what he's done at Maryland, the pros that he's put out into Major League Soccer, you know, whether we're talking about guys like Graham Zusi or Omar Gonzalez, Zach Steffen, who came up huge in a playoff game the other day, that's an advertisement for Maryland. It's also an advertisement for Big Ten Soccer. Absolutely. He's an advocate for this game, too, that college soccer desperately needs. As the ball gets loose and down go two Maryland players. Mashburn comes up with it. Elney with a lot of contact there with Samaki. And this is distribution to Atua Henny. First time he's getting touches in the overtime session. Gets around Campbell. Looks for the cross ball. Goes near post to St. Clair. That's what I want to see more of, of, of Atua Henny. Knowing your pace. Push the ball by the defender. Beat him one-on-one. -on -one. You need a better end product there, a better final product. Get a good cross in. But when he's on the ball, this is what he's capable of. Just pure pace and power to get by you. And he just couldn't get his foot around it on the cross totally. But that's why MLS scouts are watching this kid. That's why uh, he's so dangerous for Maryland. When he's isolated in space, he can beat you so many different ways. Well, Omar Farouk Osman, who's been tremendous. Paul has paid him off dutifully in his time on the field is off now. And Robbie Mertz comes back out on the field. Mertz had that game-tying goal at Indiana where Michigan was able to get out with a draw. It kind of turned, it turned the tide. It made believers out of a lot of team, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks when it came to what kind of quality Shaka Daly and the Wolverines were going to bring to this season. They had a setback at Michigan State the next week, and then they actually kind of went into a lull. But these were close games against highly ranked opponents. They had some injuries that they were dealing with, and as you and I talked at the beginning of the of the broadcast, Shaka Daly really has had the healthy scenario in the way of players only twice this year, and this week was the second time. So he's got his best 11 selection out there throughout the course of this afternoon's match. Look, every team is going to have injuries over the course of the season. Big ball in, cleared out by Reagan. Gordon Wild. Opts not to go alone. Chipped ball is going to be cleared. Probably not the way Borges wanted it. So it'll reload for George Campbell on a throw. Injuries are inevitable. This is when you want to get healthy. And it, it, it's... Sadich cuts inside. Can't find his connection with Elney. And Makuna comes out with it and clears it. And that's what Shaka Daly talked about. Just being healthy at the right time. A guy like Makuna coming off a shoulder injury. How big has he been here today? Atua Henny finally getting healthy. How dangerous has he been? This is when you want your team coming together, going into the postseason. St. Clair goes long, and that's welcomed by Henry Mashburn, the goalkeeper for Michigan. Daniel Makuna, experienced in the English football school culture. He's dangerous on restarts, imposing, and we've seen his toughness throughout the evening. Yeah, I mean, you can see him wearing that shoulder brace. Henry, yeah. oh my. How about Dane St. Clair coming up off his line big. Terrific work. 
in the service in there by Hallahan. Yeah, good ball by Hallahan, but well read by St. Clair. Mohamed Zaki gets a yellow card. We mentioned yellow card peril, as we like to call it in another league. Four yellows, Mark Ibarra. Four yellows for Jack Hallahan. They get one more, and they'll miss the next game. Williamson does some work on the far side. Has to deal with Mertz. Big ball in. Headed away as Rosansky gets to it. Or punched away, I should say, by Mashburn as Rosansky gets to it. That's what we're talking about, though, with Eric Williamson. When he decides to do something brilliant, he can do it. He takes on two, three defenders, gets to the end line, serves in a good ball. Big service on the restart. Mashburn's going to keep that on the turf. Certainly, Williamson recognized the moment there, but that's what he's capable of. He gets his head up, he sees the defenders, he decides he's going to beat them on his own. Dribbles by them, and, and take a look here at just his recognition of the moment. Williamson gets on the ball. All right, I'll take this defender one-on-one. -on -one. Here's help, no problem, I'm going to go by you. Just a bit of a hesitation gives him the space to get the cross, and it's really, really nice individual work from Williamson. And credit to Henry Mashburn on the save, but that's what he's capable of. Had a draw between Indiana and Michigan State. If this score line stands, this is what the brackets will look like for the Big Ten tournament next week. Indiana will finish as the number one seed. Maryland will be the number three seed. Michigan will be four, and Michigan State will go ahead and lock in that number two seed. Well, nobody wants to be the team that faces Wisconsin. That's a team with a chip on their shoulder. But right now, this Michigan squad is playing with a bit of a chip, too. And they've got, as you said, a clear pathway to owning a Big Ten championship for the first time in the history of their program. I think every program comes into these moments where they can really take that next big step. And Chuck Daly's been slowly building Michigan up into something. And here is a big moment for this young team. And a guy like Daniel Makuna coming back from an injury, stepping in to the back line, and he's just been so huge all day. First, obviously, the goal. A big header to start things off for Michigan, but on the defensive side, he's been present everywhere as well, clearing one shot off the line. Here, he's stepping back, making big tackles. We've seen him keeping pace with some of Maryland's faster players. We've seen him getting stuck in in big moments. For me, he's been the key to this Michigan team, and as you said, they're getting healthy at the right time. He's a big part of it. What happens if you win this game, Michigan Wolverines? Well, if you do, you're the Big Ten champion, and you're the number one seed for the Big Ten tournament that starts next weekend. There's no doubt Michigan and Maryland will, will both host games next week as the quarterfinals get underway, but if you lose this game tonight, you end up being the fourth seed. And for both Michigan and Maryland, uh, a different story. If it's a draw tonight at 1-1, Michigan remains the fourth seed. Maryland, on the other hand, is the second seed. Well, Maryland brought a lot of players back from a team that did damage last year, undefeated all the way, making that run late into the NCAA tournament before the upset loss. And I think credit to them in the first half of overtime. They were able to get the game, the pace of the game, to come back down to where they were comfortable. It really slowed Michigan down. They know that they're going to be just fine as a two seed if they draw this game. Will they have moments to get goals in this rain? Yes, we saw it with what Eric Williamson did at the end of that half. But I think you're seeing a veteran team understanding the difference between a win and a draw and opening up too much and, and losing and dropping to that four seed. Well, after the week and a half that they've had for Maryland, a draw is going to feel like a win, right? It's going to feel like you survived the elements. They're riding a three-game losing streak, and Eric Williamson and Dane St. Clair and company would just love to get out of here with the point and know that you're the number two seed for Michigan. It's everything now. They all had the only shot in the first overtime session. If they can find their way to goal here in this second overtime session. They're going to celebrate. Celebrate with a banner in Ann Arbor next year as the Big Ten champs. That's a great point with Maryland on that losing streak. I mean, you've got to be mentally strong. You want that win, right? You want to snap the streak, but you also have to be smart. And I think the takeaway if this game ends 1-1 is they did really well to respond going down an early goal, getting a goal back at home, and then managing the game. And, and that would be, I think, the takeaway for Sasha Swarovski. Williamson 
up against Billy Stevens. These two know each other well. How about Stevens doing wonderfully in the open field on defense? Mohamed Zaki's going to work with Stevens as he overlaps, and the Tuahene gets forward. This is Serda now. A Tuahene. Bit of a zip in their step. Oh, that's a lovely through ball. Zaki looking to lay it back off and can. The pressure right away, and now the long ball forward is broken up. There's your boy, Makuna, again. It's just a great read of the situation. He's isolated as a center back, one-on-one -on -one with the striker. And he's going out to the wing and reading that pass and stepping in front of it. It's just a really, really nice job by a center back to be able to cover that much ground. I really also love the way Atua Henny has been embracing this moment, trying to find the ball as much as possible. Williamson to Gordon Wild. Working the combination play, maybe asking just a little too much. And Mashburn with no, some moxie in the back. I think what's happening there is Wild thinks he's making the run to take defenders away and leave Williamson isolated. Williamson instead playing the one-touch pass. That might be that moment where you need to recognize that sometimes runs are there to take defenders away, open up space. Zerda by himself for a moment, looks through far side. It overplays that pass. Ivo Serta, early season injury, but relied upon to keep this team connected in the midfield. There were moments early in the season when Coach Shaka Daly had to play him a little deeper in the system. And it did not benefit Michigan. It benefits Michigan when he's forward with connecting play in the attacking half of the field. Got a bit of that Chilean flair, doesn't he, when he gets on the ball and he starts thinking and looking for those little passes in between the lines and tight spaces. Hallahan across the face of the penalty box, inside to Atua Hene. The shot goes wide, saved by St. Clair! Dane St. Clair stealing some headlines for himself tonight. What a moment from Dane St. Clair. I mean, Atua Hene doing everything he can to lift Michigan to this title. Here he gets on the ball and just opens up space for himself. Fantastic, fantastic save from St. Clair. Reminiscent of what Mashburn did in that same goal in the second half. Elney and Williamson apply pressure defensively and win that ball back. Here's Elney on the run. Broken up by Makuna. Williamson, quick service in and Mashburn with the save. Let's take a look here at how it happened. Hallahan finds it to a Henny, comes into his left foot, looking for that far post and a full stretch from Dane St. Clair to keep the ball out. Really nice job to see it all the way through. Another really good opportunity for Michigan. Dane St. Clair with eight shutouts this season. He's got a .96 goals against average. Big ball in, the loose ball is there, and the goal by Atua Henny gives Michigan their very first Big Ten championship. Let the celebration begin in Ann Arbor. Shaka Daly tactically on point with his group all afternoon. The substitutions and the moments paying him off. Well, here you see the left foot of Jack Hallahan getting the service. Zaki does a nice job crashing the box. You can see Dane St. Clair coming out, trying to make the save. He can't get his hand on it. And what a moment, what a moment for Francis Atuahene. He has been all over the place in the last 20 minutes of the second half in overtime, and it pays off with a goal here. What a moment, not just for Atuahene, but for Shaka Daly and the Michigan Wolverines and for this program. Number 10 for Michigan has five goals on the year. Four of them have been game winners. Are you kidding me? And you talked about the tactical adjustments of Shaka Daly. Jack Callahan usually plays on the right wing, cutting into his left foot so he can get shots on goal. Here in the rainy weather at Maryland, he moves over to the left wing where that left foot is providing service into the box. He gets the cross in that leads to the goal from Atua Henny. 
Last time Michigan won in double overtime, you got to go back to September of 2013. How does number one sound, Michigan? You are the top seed and the champion headed into next week's Big Ten tournament. What a moment for this program. And if you're Maryland, four losses in a row now at home, and you go into the tournament, you drop to the four seed, you've got Wisconsin in the first round. Well, Maryland has not lost four in a row in 24 years. The first year that that man took over this program, this storied program of now success, is in a bit of a rut. But these guys in maize and blue are celebrating tonight in Ludwig's Field. And College Park is watching the Wolverines raise the trophy as the Big Ten champions. And I think you have to say after watching this game, it was a well-deserved win for Michigan. I thought they approached it the right way the first 20 minutes to get a goal, to make sure the crowd couldn't energize Maryland. They give up a goal, but they never stopped fighting. 20 minutes left in the game. As soon as that score went final in East Lansing, offensive substitution from Chuck Daly. He said, let's go for it. We have a chance at a Big Ten championship, and it paid off here today. They've got the trophy, they're getting the caps, and they're going to hang a banner in Ann Arbor next year as the Big Ten champions of 2017. The Michigan Wolverines in overtime. 2-1 decision over the Maryland Terrapins. And here he is. Jack Callahan goes out to the left wing, gets that ball in. Zaki, again, a great job crashing the goal, and Atua Henny cleans it up on the far post. We're going to take a quick break. We hope to hear from some of these guys celebrating if we can break them away from the party when we continue on the Big Ten Network. First time they won double in double overtime since 2013, and they kind of did it in style with a little trophy riding on the line. The Michigan Wolverines beat Maryland 2-1, and they are the Big Ten champions. Second to that, they are the number one seed headed into the Big Ten tournament, and that man, Shaka Daly is celebrating with his teammates on the home team's field. It is Ludwig Field, College Park, Maryland, the house that Sasho built, and it is so difficult to win in this spot. That was the first thing Shaka told us this week when we talked to him. This is a tough place to play, but his squad got the job done this afternoon. You know, they had the right mentality going into this game, and it starts, obviously, from Shaka Daly. He said, look, we want to win. A regular season title would be huge, but we have to be smart about it. We shouldn't push and push for 90 minutes and open ourselves up. We have to wait for the right moments. This team did that. They, they started well in the first 20 minutes. They had to work their way back into the game, and then they hit the gas at the right time. And I think it's just the right approach from the team, but also from the players to understand when to go and when not to go. And I think Francis Atua Henny, for me, he understood it better than anyone. Eight shots, eight of his team's 16 shots here today. And you can see how much it means to Shaka Daly. Came from Providence. Probably, probably, took, probably took a chance coming to Ann Arbor. Knew what he wanted to do to get it done. Those aren't raindrops under his eyes. This man puts a lot of work into his players, into his program, into protecting his athletes. He's got quality young men representing the University of Michigan tonight. And he has every right to be moved by what he just witnessed. Absolutely. He said he came here from Providence. He had the experience of playing in the NCAA tournament. No one on this team did. And he said to his team, you have a chance to do something special. You have a chance to do something different. You can lay the pillars of what Michigan soccer is. You start this trajectory to get back to the quality of what Michigan soccer is going to be about. And I think you can see why that means so much to him and how much it means to this whole team. There are some big names that have come out of a couple of big years of Michigan soccer. I know a guy by the name of Justin Merrim who is celebrating tonight. Congratulations, Suni Saad. I mean, we, we could go through Jake Stacy. 
There are some great names in the history of Maryland, of uh, Michigan soccer, and in Maryland soccer too, but there are amazing gold alums who are celebrating tonight because of what Shaka Daly and the Michigan Wolverines were able to do at Maryland. And how about that guy, Henry Mashburn, the goalkeeper for the Wolverines. He got the, uh, he got the nod four games ago, and he's managed to post wins in all four of those games. Francis Atuahene is the young man who scored the game winner tonight. How about the hat, Francis? How does the Big Ten Championship hat fit tonight? I must say, I feel really good. Uh, but honestly, it's, it's the hard work and the dedication that we've been putting on all week, all since spring last uh, last year. So it's, I think it shows that hard work really pays off. And it, 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 today is like an example of that. So I'm just excited. And it feels good to wear the hat. Fr Francis, we saw you come in in the latter part of the second half, and you stuck with us with it through the uh, overtime sessions. Did you get a sense that that goal was coming for you, or were you getting frustrated that the ball wasn't where you needed it to be? Um, that, I mean, we've been working really hard, and it's like always when when you keep doing the same thing and it's not happening, like we always get frustrated. But we know ourselves, we know our ability, so we just kept working hard, keep playing. We knew eventually we we're gonna get that one chance, and. When it comes, we, we, we take it like, just like we did. So. Francis, everyone here at the Big Ten Network congratulates you. Go celebrate with your teammates. Have a safe trip back to Ann Arbor, and we'll see you next weekend here on the network, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Indeed. Congratulations. He scored the game winner, and oh, look at that. Let's, let's get a game ball. Why not? How about uh, Coach Shaka Daly stepping out there wondering if he should maybe Ask Sasha Starosky if he can take that game ball. Here's the bracket. It's final. All the games are done. Number one, Michigan faces the winner of the 8-9 game, which will be played in Ann Arbor on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll also see that 4-5 matchup between Maryland and Wisconsin, Michigan State, Ohio State, and Indiana will play host to Penn State. Some really interesting storylines to watch now going into this tournament. Obviously, Michigan being at that one seed, they've got to feel good going into that game. But I circle that 4-5. Maryland, Wisconsin, a really tough opponent for the Terps as they try to come out of this losing streak. And then Indiana, they're holding on to an undefeated season. Can they keep it rolling despite the disappointment of not being a Big Ten champion? Well, for Paul Tenorio and our entire BTN crew, including every man and woman at College Park, bringing us the great pictures. Stats, Nick 